So me hear the arguments, you know, Jesus Christ and all these things. And me I said non apologetically, you know, we not work with Jesus Christ, you know. Yeah, we not work with Jesus Christ and that guy lick, lick a whole heap of head. Cause a whole heap of man here, Rasta say, I the still is the second coming of Jesus Christ. Me not them joke there. Me not in those joke. You know, see, me not, me not them joke there. Cause we never come in a Rasta to come here about Jesus Christ again. After we know, say, the man they make up some things and dash for away. Before we go to the root of the conversation, we are listening to them third and fourth and views. So we don't really into the Jesus thing. And we're not praying to no Jesus and say it's Ireland Silas we are praying to. Because we're not even praying to Ireland Silas neither. I don't go to bed and say, oh, Ireland Silas what in Zion. I don't say those things. Greetings, viewers and subscribers. Wagwan, open up all doing great. Now, my people, we're there again on a Sunday. And you know, today is a day where most people have their religious practices. I come across this critical religious reasoning by Muta Baroka. And I'm telling you, this one is super, super educational. And we as African people need to lean to these reasonings. Because only these reasonings can free our mind and our soul. So we can have a different understanding of religions and the full finish that is taking place. And also to educate our ones and ones. So not fall in traps or fall for these trickeries that is going on religiously. So my people, let's stay tuned for this. And before I get into it, you know it's a black power movement. Drop a like and subscribe. Share to a friend or a family so they can be a part of the movement. Now my people, let's take a walk. This is a revolution. Rastafari is the answer to white supremacy and colonialism. That is where it was bound for. Man, I come try to change it now. You know, one love, one heart, let's get together and be all right and all them something like they want to have a 24 7, 56 weeks, 360 odd days a year, 2,000 years in a millennium, and really claim it as redemption because it can facilitate certain music. Yes. Because most man know, because he facilitates certain music, he says they say so there. Most Rasta are no musician. Most Rasta is not musician. Sorry for disappoint you. Most Rasta is not musician. It's just that the ones them who do music, them have the voice. Like how oh, me they on the radio all the while, people hear my voice all the while, so it come like. Muta is a Rasta voice. But there are so many voices of Rastafari out there. But we really have come to grips with the theology and the philosophy where Rasta is supposed to deal with. In at this time yeah. And even in at this time yeah, given the COVID sensibilities that is creating certain hardship and certain levels of scaredom. I will call it scared of. We need to get a grip of ourselves as Rasta. We need to get a grip, man. Okay, I'll continue to go like we never did reach a certain level. We reach a certain level, so we are going like we reach over Jordan and we turn back. We're not turn back. We're not have a search for River Jordan neither. We are create our own river. And we not sit on by no rivers up no Babylon. Because you know, long way your man has seen that. Go by rivers of Babylon and sat down. And there we wept when he remember Zion. And the wicked carry us away in captivity. Required us as a song. How can we sing King Alpha song in a strange land? Yet still, every day a man make a song. About Ja Rastafari. We have to figure it out, you know. We have to figure it out. But man say, too much mix up, mix up. We have to be straight like an arrow. 
Yeah, man, we can't build us a gold house and a gold house and make the wind just a lick back to you by yourself like some boat. We don't have no rudder. If it's straight like an arrow, man. So if you deal with the thing, just deal with the thing. But I go around and I come back around and I go around like circles, you know, you go around in circles and go around in circles. No, straight. Leonard Owil. Leonard Owil. Show me that. Marcus Gavi. Yeah, man. The man there. Show me certain things. Some people don't even know about Leonard Owil. You hear about Leonard Owil, you don't even know who's in Leonard Owil. You know, you have Martin Moplano. Yeah, man. The man they stand up. We'll call no Bono G. Like Rock of Gibraltar. Them stand up there and no move. You, them are going like them. Them are skid out the thing. A pretty out the thing. Yeah, like a pretty thing are going. You know, Cha Cha Rasta. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird, man. No, sir. In my house, there is a picture on the wall. Rastafari sit up on his throne. Yes. We're not equating Eilis Selassie with no one. Because we cannot make Eilis Selassie lesser or greater than who him is. So all the names them where you put on him, you know, all the names them where you attach to it cannot make him greater or lesser than who him is. So just accept him just like that. You don't have to send him gone 2,000 years ago. You don't have to talk about him dip and cross and come back. All them little illusions is not necessary in Rastafari. Rastafari is facing the reality of life. Rastafari is showing African people that there is another way to look at life in the Western world. So we go to the root of mankind, which is Ethiopia. We go to the root of man which is Ethiopia and we find something that is binding us together to make our life here in this part of the world and this farmer slave plantation island more meaningful and more purposeful to understand ourselves and we have people who have guided us over the years man like Marcus Gavi, who say Africa for Africans, those at home and those abroad, who make you recognize that it's a simple journey, but you have to make up your mind to take the journey. Because one, one step and you tumble. One step and you can't tumble. Yet, yet still them say a thousand miles start with that one step. And I will leave a man tumble, you know. Will leave a man tumble, but the journey continue even if you tumble and can't bother. It's just so it go. And censored. Hear what I go now. I will leave a people out there. I try to make the people them who are wear masks. They might make it look like say, them people, they are idiot. One woman write me last week and said, I'm a conformist. <laughs> she said, We are conformist, but you are now. You see this mask thing? You see this, what they call separate, like keep far from people? We explain that already now. We talk about it on the stepping razor, we talk about it on this program. Yeah? I'm still going to talk about it because the COVID is not gone, you know. The COVID is not gone. Because more people are having it now in Jamaica and more people are dead in Jamaica and more people are start to get scared and frightened. All right. Human beings 
seems as if we still not learn from history. History teach a whole heap of things, you know, that you don't really step forward in a, the mistakes where you make of all. No, I don't know if a whole heap of Jamaican people know this. Or if they didn't know it, they would not follow the whole heap of madness where they must sip on them WhatsApp and them Instagram page and Facebook page and all them something. There. But I want to tell the Jamaican people them this. Mankind have been this place before. Them pass this road before. You have flu. You have all kind of things will come true. Um, the same things them when you hear them I say you must do now is that them did say when those flu did pass through. It is not true. I'm never say it non apologetically. It is not true that the man them are whosoever wanted to wear a mask and um, stay in your house because they want to control the population. It is not true. Now, I don't know, some people gone too far already for to turn back now in the whole heap of madness. But there is no evidence or proof that, apart from where you have, say, where people are trying to push the Trump here and doctrine. Because right now, I call it Trump doctrine. Because it's a Trump doctrine. Anytime you hear a man say, him no no mass thing. I say, well, you know, the Trump doctrine. Anytime you hear a man at talk about, say, boy, right now, you don't want physical distance because you don't understand why the matter of physical distance. You don't want nobody um, take your temperature. You, you don't want nobody rub things by your... I tell you already, you know, if you don't want a man put things by your hand, carry your own. If you don't want somebody rub anything by your hand, carry your own. No. You know the problem now. The problem with it is that people almost are taking this thing like it's a movement, a no mask movement, a Trumpian designed movement. But Trump now, as the big, the most so called most powerful man for earth, according to what the American they might say, because he refused to wear a mask and he make thousands of people now wear it. We over here so I jump on it and attack damn foolishness. But mass go kill you off and mass. Look here. Every pandemic we pass through earth, them show you that the mass thing is something that work. I mean, I just look on what these guys are saying, all the CDC guys are saying. I mean, I definitely not look on what Trump are doing. But I just listen to CDC and World Health Organization. I look upon historical things that happen. You know, the flu them will pass through. The flu will pass through and kill millions of people more than this one, you know. Because this one must have gone about a million. In America, it gone 200 at all. But the same thing, the same thing will lick America. In the 1918s or something which part it there. It's the same thing I hit them now with 200 and thousand people dead in America because they never take heed to what they must do to prevent the thing from spreading. So they start come up with some weird things now like like herding and all these thinking just just make the thing kill everybody. <laughs> make the thing kill who to are kill. And then you will get the thing. Stop, stop travel. It's a madness. Anybody where your ears say that it's madness. It's American talk. That it's an American talk. We are telling people say, "Why right now, earth?" Make it, well, you just pile up the people them who more receptive to it and help them, and then make everybody run go. The mass and no mass. Make them run go to go do the matter. It's madness. It's madness. There is things that can prevent it from spread. Common sense should have shown you that. Common sense can show you that there's certain things that the virus is not a living organism. It's not a living thing. But it moves when people move. It moves when people move in the body of other people and contaminate the body 
and make it easier for your next person to catch it. And everybody can catch it. All when you wear a mask, you can't catch it. But may I say, you see the mask thing, and you see the physical distance thing, and you see the no crowd, don't go in and hold up a crowd or them thing there. This thing is something where happened before. It's not no it to happen. This, this, they never come up with this. No, because they want to control the people then. They want to control the virus. So if me so like me, I take up for men and people, so be it. It's, it's tough luck if you want to say that. Me I say that there is certain things that can prevent it from move and lessen the sickness and the agony and the pain we are all people people go through and the whole heap of mental this and now me and my wife a reason a while ago and she said it now go work if them door open the place and the people them i tell the people them for wear masks listen to what she has said you know i should have really wake her up out of bed make she come up check up time out into that anyway she said she not it, it not going to work if the people them don't have no work and them tell them must wear the mask. So all you have to do is get the people them for wear the mask and open up the place. It's simple. I me agree. Me agree. Open up the place, but make sure that the people them are by. You know what that means? That means you have to go make the mask mandatory because. These people don't have a talk about Bill Gates and this and this and that. They're not going to do it. So you have to make it as other countries mandatory. Other countries do it. Yeah, they make it mandatory and open up the place. Yeah, them say in a, in a certain country, Taiwan and all them places, they don't close down the place. But they make it say you have to have an amass. You know, see, the teacher ball, so you go jail. <laughs> she, she, she say, if you don't have the bars, you must go jail. Because then those, you have a cause the place to open up. <laughs> All right. So, I agree with it. I agree with it. But you see, Jamaican people, you know, we gone so deep in the foolishness, you know, that you can't tell people certain things that say, look, you know, if everybody are wearing the mask, you know, see it. You could have any party and still keep a distance away from them. Have the party said we, but most Jamaican people now are going to tell about party. You now everybody bungle up and one another. And I tell some people have no mask, like Trump meeting them. Because if you look on Trump meeting them, you know, I'm going to people them behind him in the picture of all the mask, you know. But them show you, I think, him now have none. And um, hey, you see Trump sing a, a dance to YMCA. <laughs> you ever see Trump a dance to YMCA? If you ever do a who sing YMCA, it's a real thing. <laughs> anyway, alright, what I say is that the place can't open up, you know. The place can't open up without the, without the curfew, without nothing, the curfew. But the people have to put on their mask. It's just simply, you know, it's a scientific thing about it, you know. Open up the place, make everybody go out to the door, but everybody put on a mask. We're wrong with that. We're wrong with that. You'd have prefer door, open up the place, and more people are catch it, and some people have on the mask, and some people don't have on the mask. No, sir. Because the mask not going to kill nobody. I can't do it. Some idiot people are talking about. Me understand that, but carbon dioxide are breathing and something but you're not having all the mass long enough to get that death sentence because look how long you use your cell phone in your years and you're not getting no death sentence that you tell me say the cell phone have more destructive things in it than the mass so sensibility sensible sensible i right, listen to it now sensible you want business going as you try but there's a disease there, there, a virus, sorry, not disease. There's a virus out there that I kill people, that I make people sick. And one of the ways to lessen the problem is to wear a mask. 
If you wear the mask and the people them open back the place and people keep wearing the mask, the thing will get lessened because it will have no, it, 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 the, the virus not going to move. Because if a man cough, him cough in the mask. If a man sneeze, him sneeze in the mask. It, 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 it will like spread. If you keep the distance, it just so it go. There's a logic behind it, you know. It's years it happened, you know. You have flu on top of flu on top of flu will pass through earth. Flu on top of flu. And if you look on the history, if you look on the people, them, you see them about their mass. As a matter of fact, in a California, them did say, they make mass mandatory. If you do have no mass, them could arrest you. You know, see, it's just simple. And that are from before me, anybody upon the earth, never ever ban it. Because them think they're in 1918, 19. 10, all them wear them. We don't know nobody in Arrowhead about 1918. You understand? Nobody in Jamaica never alive. And them days are the man them tell you, put on your mask. And every time, every time the people them now adhere to it, the thing go up. Till them have first wave, second wave, third wave, all fourth wave, you know. Put on the mask and go to your work. Put on your mask and go do what you do. It's just simple, you know. Keep the distance from people if you're in a crowd and them something there. And you still, you go back to your work, you can't go make money, school, work, and all them something there. But if you not do that, you go continue to say, Babylon won't control you. This and that won't control you. No, no, go so. No, no, go so. Nobody no won't control you, at least not now. Nobody not controlling you now. You know, see, you have scientifically, you look at it scientifically. Some people have said, why are they not wearing a mask? Because Jesus has protect them. It's madness. It's total madness. A man now go wear the mask because Jesus has protect him. It's total madness. Oh, somebody get it away there. Anyway, we want to move to, to history. We are going to play a, a, a documentary about the Spanish flu. The Spanish flu did lick earth. Especially Europe and America in a 1918, I think, 1918. And them really recover. How the earth recover. That is really where this documentary is about. How the earth recover from the Spanish flu. So, we're we'll going to play the Spanish flu documentary. I want you to listen to it carefully. And don't, if you don't realize it's the same thing I take we are now. This is the cutting edge on IRFM. Just over a hundred years ago, a deadly pandemic swept across the face of planet Earth, killing anywhere between 20 and 100 million people. Potentially far more than the Great War immediately preceding it. Yet, until recently, this was a forgotten pandemic downplayed by governments and media outlets all over the world. Known as the Spanish Flu, simply because the Republican leadership in Spain at the time continued to report on it when other governments refused. It's only in the last few decades that the sheer scale and historical significance of such an outbreak has been realized potentially having just as much impact on humanity as the First World War. Like earlier pandemics in history, all the way back to the Plague of Athens, the Antonine Plague, the Plague of Justinian, and most famously, the Black Death. This was a deadly disease particularly for people who had almost no knowledge of how to fight it, killing off huge swathes of the population. Between 1918 and 1920, somewhere between a half and two-thirds of the world's population were infected, with an indiscriminate death rate of around 5%. Nowhere near that of the Black Death, but enough all the same. In the much more interconnected world of the 20th century, 
the young affected just as much as the old. On a whole, the majority of people survived, which is precisely why the disease was so deadly, allowing it to spread to every corner of the globe. Yet, after the mass graves were filled, after each one of these deadly plagues in history subsided, the people returned, picked up where they'd left off, recovered. Sometimes finding themselves in much better positions than they'd been in before. After the Black Death in the 14th century, the peasantry in England, fewer in numbers and higher in demand, got a new lease on social mobility. For some historians, paving the way for the emergence of the middle class to come. After the plague in the 17th century, it's been argued that social unrest led to the success of the parliamentary system. The end of absolute power in the hands of a monarch in England. And, of course, after the Spanish flu, we have the Roaring Twenties. Though brief and often overshadowed by the Great Depression of the 1930s and the Second World War which followed, this was a new era of prosperity, of social mobility and change. So then, how did the world bounce back from the Spanish flu? Let's take a look. The influenza pandemic of 1918 to 1919 takes the title of deadliest and most widespread pandemic in history. With census records of the time either difficult to decipher or non-existent, it remains impossible to arrive at a completely accurate figure of the death toll. Though experts today think it may have been as high as 100 million. the absolute lowest figures around the 20 million mark. With an overall world population at the time of less than 2 billion, the implications are staggering. In the United States alone, at least 675,000 Americans lost their lives. Worldwide, well over half a billion people were infected. Yet, somehow, despite the major global conflict and the pandemic which followed, much of the world bounced back from the damage with a fury. The US notably surging into the prosperous Roaring Twenties. And even Germany enjoying a brief decade of stability and growth under the Weimar Republic. Until everything changed with the Wall Street crash of 1929. All this in an age before air travel, when most people stayed in one area for their whole lives. So then, how did this virus spread in the first place? When the H1N1 influenza virus first struck, the US had been fighting in the European theatre of the First World War for more than a year. Tens of thousands of men regularly travelled across the Atlantic to the front, and production lines boomed in efforts to produce war material and combat gear. It was during this mass population movement that the first reports of illness began to appear. First at Fort Riley in Kansas in March, and shortly afterwards, New York. Due to the high population density of soldiers at the camp, the flu spread rapidly, quickly infecting around 1,100 people. 38 of these succumbed to pneumonia. 
like any cold or flu, the Spanish flu spread to new hosts through droplets propelled into the air when a person sneezed, coughed, or even talked. Able to survive outside the body for extended periods of time, these droplets could then be transmitted by touch. The movement of people continued unabated, however. The war effort simply could not be halted. No individual had that power. But widely, in order to maintain high morale, as the war effort swung in favour of the Allied powers, European governments, then having a stranglehold over the media, heavily understated the severity of the disease. Meanwhile, news reports began surfacing from the other European powers, claiming that infection rates in Britain, France and Germany remained minimal, while neutral Spain was particularly hard hit. Thus, the Spanish flu, almost certainly born on a Kansas farm, was named. As army recruits travelled from America to Europe and soldiers on medical leave continued to return home, the disease rapidly spread between the two continents. And before long, further afield. As much as their governments tried to deny it, writing it off as nothing more than an unusually virulent strain of flu, European nations like England, France, Italy and Germany, as well as Spain, were hit badly as the virus took a hold of their populations. At first, though the illness was widespread, most of the deaths were in elderly people and infants. This strain, having next to no pneumonic effect on healthy men and women between the ages of 20 and 40. As spring merged into summer, new infections plateaued and dropped off, causing many to believe the worst was over. Whatever loose social distancing rules that had been put in place were cancelled, in anticipation of the disease mostly being eradicated. Since ordinary people didn't have the means nor the education to deal properly with the virus, especially given the war effort, Scientists had limited tools and data to work with anyway. Most countries did not respond adequately. During this first wave, the general lack of awareness didn't seem like much of an issue. For the most part, life returned to normal, if it had even been disrupted in the first place. Yet, all this was to change. Whilst America and Europe eased their restrictions, the coming end of the war being celebrated worldwide, the Spanish flu had another trick up its sleeve. In the medical camps of Europe, filled with tens of thousands of vulnerable, recovering soldiers, a much more dangerous and merciless strain was mutating. This version of the virus directly attacked the respiratory system, making it especially contagious and deadly. This strain of the flu did not discriminate, with all age groups under threat. When the second wave of Spanish flu dawned in the autumn and the winter of 1918, Europe and America linked to almost every corner of the globe by an elaborate series of trade networks and imperial colonies, were struck almost entirely unprepared. No effective cures, drugs or antibiotics were present to combat the sweeping spread of the second wave virus, resulting in a terrifyingly high infection and fatality rate. With already weakened immune systems due to the physical and mental traumas of battle they'd suffered, soldiers returning from the front were particularly hard hit.
having endured all the horror of years of brutal trench warfare, often living in terrible conditions, medical professionals watched on helplessly as these men, the greatest generation, succumbed by the thousand, drowning in their own mucus as their lungs filled with fluid. Failing to implement any sort of nationwide lockdown or strategy to combat the spread, it didn't take long for this new, deadlier version of Spanish flu to take hold. Tens of thousands of deaths soon became hundreds of thousands, and finally, millions. For lack of a better option, for the most part, the Spanish flu was simply left to run its course. A vaccine wouldn't be developed until the 1940s. In America, plans to counter the second wave of flu varied from state to state and city to city. In Philadelphia, the public health director told civilians that the returning soldiers were simply suffering from flu caught on the front and that the infection would soon be contained. Amidst constant warnings from scientists that the virus called for much more drastic action, the city of Philadelphia still refused to call off its Liberty Loan Parade on the 28th of September. particularly fast-acting illness, the very next day, hospitals were crammed. A few days later, the death rate in Philadelphia surged. With no more hospital beds available, infected individuals were simply turned away. Faced with an overwhelming number of cases, Philadelphia was finally forced to close its schools theatres and public spaces, but not before it suffered more than 750 deaths per 100,000 people and many more infections. In comparison, St. Louis had capped this rate at about 350 deaths per 100,000. As a result of poor advice and overconfidence, Many American cities experienced tragic spikes in their death rates. Late implementation of social distancing measures spelt death for a great deal of citizens living in urban centers, where the flu spread like wildfire through neighborhoods, in shops, and out on the streets. By the end of October, in the United States alone, more than 200,000 people had died from the virus. In the coming weeks, as the severity and non-discriminatory nature of the situation dawned, a hard-fought battle would be waged to recoup losses and flatten the curve. Meanwhile, bodies were piled up into makeshift morgues, and one writer complained that Philadelphia had ten times as many bodies was coffins. All over the world, this second wave virus struck, indiscriminately killing off large numbers of people, particularly in cities and densely populated areas. Finally, by December, the statistics where they existed seemed to look good. The virus was wearing itself out. The death rate finally lowering. In the US and Europe, cities began to loosen their lockdown restrictions, and most assumed the pandemic to be finally ending. Yet, just like before, this would be a fatal mistake. By January, the third wave of Spanish flu came thundering in in full force. In the bleak midwinter, as hoarfrost gripped the northern hemisphere, 
this outbreak wouldn't subside until the early summer. Months later. Once again, a certain level of incompetence reigned as national and local leaders simply failed to act quickly enough. In some cities, restrictions were enforced again, but in others, again, measures came too late. Though not quite as late as the first and second wave. Public transport faced shortages in personnel, and again, many people simply refused to wear face masks or obey social distancing rules. When caught, this earned them fines, and in a couple of cases, bullets from the police forces. Tensions ran hot, often vented as criticism towards governments, sometimes breaking out into all-out civil unrest. One of the great flaws in worldwide responses to the Spanish flu had been the policies of local containment and mitigation, which led to a lack of consistent nationwide planning. The gaps in this response strategy allowed the virus to continue inflicting terrible damage on society, resulting in a sustained death rate in urban centres. Misunderstandings about which health products to use and high prices for face masks amongst already impoverished people made it difficult to combat the flu on a personal level. Though newspaper cartoons encouraged the public to stay away from anyone who had cold or flu symptoms, to walk or cycle to work instead of taking public transport, and to not get fatigued as this would weaken the immune system, Advice was often misleading, varying significantly from town to town and city to city. Many simply refused to adhere to the rules. Finally, as the summer of 1919 arrived, the worst was over and recovery could begin. fourth wave hit once more in the early months of 1920, sparking widespread panic. Yet, thankfully, rather than resulting in pneumonia and death, this flu was much milder, most people suffering little more than fatigue, headache and a sore throat. Finally, after close to two years, the world could move on. In the immediate aftermath of the Spanish flu, many parts of the world, including the US and Europe, faced economic recession. Between 1920 and 1921, the US was hit particularly badly. Robert Barrow, professor of economics at Harvard University, estimates that the increase in flu-related deaths reduced GDP and consumption in the US by approximately 6%, as well as increasing inflation rates in the economy. The world had been tested by war, disease and poverty. But by 1921, finally, things seemed to be on the up. In the US in particular, partly due to increased wages for workers and a growing focus on consumer manufacturing, the economy boomed. By 1929, growing by around 42%. For the survivors, life became healthier too, with life expectancy steadily growing and an increased investment in science and medicine leading to newfound understanding of how viruses spread and how better to contain them in the future. Unsurprisingly, soap and pharmaceutical companies made a killing from the pandemic, selling their products with the help of newspaper adverts. 
This, too, helped the US economy to get going again after the flu subsided. Larger research budgets for infectious disease laboratories and consumer spending on medicine and health products helped organizations and small businesses grow after the end of the pandemic, resulting in economic benefits and a greater interest in developing technology, which eventually spilled over into the public sphere, creating consumer electronics, a new market which would revolutionize the world. The massive production of materials like guns and artillery shells during the war further catalyzed improvements in factory organization and production line machinery, allowing automobiles, electronics and other consumer-oriented goods to be manufactured quicker and sold at higher quantities. No longer needing to fulfill targets for war products, other businesses, too, soon became involved in mass-producing items for the general public. Notably, cars becoming more widely available than ever before. Creating never-before-available opportunities in the process. And in this entrepreneurial climate, new businesses sprung up. In its mid to late stages, the Spanish flu killed off millions of healthy young men and women. This, on top of the deaths from the war, resulted in the US at least in a shortage of workers. Those who'd lost their jobs at small or unessential businesses that had been shut down during the pandemic found new work at factories and assembly lines where the demand for workers skyrocketed and the qualifications required were minimal. For the most part, those who wanted work could find it. And sometimes, as the power of unions grew, they could demand more for their services than ever before. Increasing social mobility and eventually leading to the establishment of the American middle class. shortage of labor due to the pandemic in due course gave rise to escalated workers wages meaning that as the roaring 20s dawned for the first time many u.s citizens could spend a portion of their paycheck on astounding new consumer devices like vacuum cleaners cars and refrigerators cutting edge appliances for the 1920s As American capital poured into post-war Europe, this prosperity, to a certain extent, filtered in there too. Even Germany enjoying a brief period of economic boom and social freedom. As demand for fuel skyrocketed, Texas became rich from the oil industry. New roads were built to accommodate cars resulting in greater mobility and, in turn, better job opportunities. Consumer spending steadily surged upwards. For the first time in U.S. history, more people lived in urban centers than in the country, giving rise to better health care access for millions of people, better work opportunities, and the chance to indulge in newly invented technology. So, as an unusual side effect of Spanish flu, workers' wages soared. Increased investments were made in scientific research and technology, better healthcare systems put in place, and greater levels of consumer spending than ever before. The US became a lender for the first time, rather than a debtor. But perhaps most of all, the influenza pandemic of 1918 to 1920 gave people a change in perspective towards their own lives, encouraging them to go out and enjoy themselves while they could. Unfortunately, 
this heedlessness towards the dangers of economic instability, much like the events leading up to the 2008 financial crash, would create a massive economic bubble. What goes up must come down. In 1929, much of the progress wrought as a result of unbridled laissez-faire capitalism would be undone when the New York stock market suffered its worst collapse in history, ultimately leading to intense poverty and hardship in places like Germany that had been propped up by US investment, where for a time wheelbarrows full of cash were needed to buy a simple loaf of bread. as well as American Midwest farmers who starved to death in droves. By the 1930s, partly as a result of this economic depression, fascism was on the rise, and another intensely difficult era began. But that's a story for another day. Thanks for watching. My name's Pete Kelly. Yes. So we play that documentary for a special reason. What is the reason? A whole heap of people who are spouting this and spouting that don't realize uh, the earth go through this more than one, more than two, more than three times before. So the, the stringent steps that are that people ask you to make is really something where it was asked before because that the same thing that took place it's not the first a virus like this passed through not the second or the third time you know it passed through already not the same one but similar to it and the same thing them tell you. Because that is the way how it spread. It spread through your nose, through your mouth. Touching and all these places. When a man sneeze on a place and you touch it, a man cough on a place or a talk too loud to you. Or a laugh. <laughs> Ironically, he may laugh and spread it. So I say, one must think. And if you get the information like what we are getting now, because we are saying if the watchman sees the danger and don't want the people, the blood of the people will be on his shoulder. And as many people say it, many, many people say it, and people kind of shun it. We hope that the voice, the cutting edge voice, will make a difference into this craziness that is going around the place we hope that what we did tonight in terms of playing that documentary for make people know say it's not the first people that tell people for wear masks are really at physical distance it's not the first people that say that and you hear how much people the man said dead with the spanish flu millions millions not thousands you know millions because right now, the man said the world got about a million dead, but the man had talked about 60 million, or nearly 100 million. Can you imagine that? And that is not the worst thing because I remember the Black Plague. We played a documentary upon the Black Plague already in Europe. You know, 75% of the population in Europe dead. 75%, them call it the Black Plague. Dead. You understand? So. We have to take a stop and don't make people make you get scared of that way because you want know. to. In all of that, America come back round, Europe come back round. 100 years ago, 100 years after, America is so called the richest country upon earth. America is the most stupidest country upon earth. <laughs> and it's just America that. And everybody wants to go to America, land of opportunity and bliss. You know, Europe, all uh, these places. You know, you have said nothing about Africa up to the end, but Africa get it to one. Because them liquid with Ebola. Liquid with all sorts of little sneaking disease, where it's not 
pandemic, but epidemic. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we are look at it and I say, we reach a stage, you know, when we see this thing go on. Now, use your sensibility, man. Use your sensibility. You can't see people are here, people are dead, and people are getting sick. And then you are saying, well, I write now a joke. Them a lie, them a tell and all them. So lie, them a tell what? Why else somebody that tell you a lie? Say 100,000 people dead over here. So in a Europe, you saw how much people dead. Why, why them a tell you a lie? Well, we did just hear about it. We just say, yeah, man, I know so much people dead. The hospital, them open. The hospital, them open. Nobody knows that the hospital, them a lie, them a tell. They look after you, them jump up. I say, oh, them not tell you how much people dead. You know, more people are dead than what them a tell you. These things not working, man. We did use a Trump and the WHO, Fauci, and when we have Bill Gates are work together. Now we hear Trump and Lincoln's World Health Organization, drought America, the World Health Organization. We hear him and Lincoln's Fauci, him and Lincoln's Uchi, 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 and all of them part of the Lincoln's tell him wife, and him wife stop trouble with him because she said she not trouble because she feel that way. Just today, just today, he's supposed to go somewhere, one, one, one of them mass meeting there. And she said, well, she can't take no more, you know. She kind of feel away, she a cough too much. So she gone back at the White House, go sleep, you understand? So, it's a thing, it's a thing, it's a thing. I have no fear of men and people and them plans, and them evil plans and wicked plans. Because I am very conscious what they will do and what they will try to do. All I know is there are certain things that is happening that I am not going to give credence to certain things when I realize about it. If you put one and one equal two, and that is what you get when you add one and one. If you get something else, you're wrong. You know, see that you're going after a while, you're going to say you did wrong. After a while, you're going to say you did wrong. The problem with it you know, is that most of those people are going to show you, say, you wrong, you know, Multa. Watch and see. You're going to see what's going to happen. Yeah, when well, they bring the vaccine and all that. So I don't care damn about vaccine. I don't care about vaccine. You understand? You know what I'm talking about? You know, they want to test it in Africa. Look here. They want to test it in America. They want to test it in England. You know, they want, you know some people come, come in today. Some people come forward to make them inject the virus in them, you know, to test the vaccine. That is what you know, man, I say. Why she, why she do it is because she knows that she's so gone and she'll look on her children and we'll come after her. You know, see, in America, them, them take 3,000 people and test the vaccine plan to see if it's going to work. I hear Obama tell the attack, I want them to say, they must give the vaccine free. I hear the Prime Minister don't have to give the vaccine free. So you want to, if a man want to take the vaccine, him take the vaccine. If a man want to take the vaccine, him don't take the vaccine. You know see? And if you're skeptical about it and you want to take it, just wait till all six months and see if anybody will drop down dead by it. And then you will find out, so don't be there and take it till because some people are dead. You know see? But meanwhile, 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 we have to watch what is going on with our surroundings. Our surroundings is very important. How you move. You remember the man at talk said that they never have a plane. So they never have a plane in 1918. So people have to stay at the place. So people decided to them not to take no bus. They're going to ride bicycle. If you can't do that in Jamaica again, so you're going to ride bicycle go, go down town. From where you live up here, so even though you can't do it still, but you have to get up early, like I'll know and start riding. <laughs> so you live a port more, you live a man, Mandeville. You can't just buy a ride, come out work every day and go back and show up business. So if you if that is madness, the madness is that you keep going amongst people and a go on like say it's a normal time we live in, it's not a normal time. It is abnormal. So I will put things where we do, we find it very abnormal. Like some people don't want to stay at them yard. Because they want to move socialize. It is abnormal. Human beings have a social 
TNA in them. So it's abnormal for them, though. Them can't get forgot with that. So them get frustrated. But guess what? It's just a time. That's all you have to look at it, you know. So it's not, it's not going to last forever. And if you can't really figure out say it's not going to last forever, you're going to get more miserable than yourself when you think and say, the church, them know why I go down town. I'm not going to go down town, Rasta. Them know why I do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to talk about we must tell them, you know, see, it ever start making you get frustrated. But look on it. My next year, them time, I would go down and say, right, remember last year, we couldn't go keep our session, and them big session, you know, yeah. And it's true, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, you know. Because we have been this way before. We passed this road before. I will keep going round the circle and I come back round. And I realize it, but wait. It look familiar, you know, but guess what? It's not familiar. But it's familiar. We have been this way before. What about human beings have been this way before? Human beings have been this way before. So there is no need to have a dreary contaminate, contaminate yourself with all sorts of vain imaginations. Vain imaginations. You know, see it? 5G, 5G is the next thing that happen, you know. <laughs> it's all of that, no, it's the next problem that I get now. <laughs> because, first of all, they have 5G phone now. They have 5G laptop. I don't know when that starts to unleash itself now. It's that next, it's that next thing that I get, you know. Because I remember the man who called me and tell me, say, the COVID is, 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 is when it's about the COVID again and the 5G. The COVID I give you 5G. Uh, it's for the 5G. The 5G I give you COVID. <laughs> well, I'm, I, I, you, you come and say something different about it, you know. They bring the COVID first and then the 5G after. But that is the next thing, too. That is the next thing, too. Because earlier in the year, I see man attack in England, say, I see bird that drop out of the sky. And when you look, when you look, it's a whole heap of bird that drop. And then you say, the 5G I cause it. The man, they have some technical way to do them camera, I think, to make you really believe it. Eh? They have all two old man, well, doctor, you know, look like doctor, professor, this and all, this, that, that, from this, that, 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 that. I tell you, say, look here, all of this thing is a hoax. There's no such thing as COVID, and it's a hoax, and this and that. A joke business. Joke business. Me could have said them things, I go on earth and I talk, and I say, well, nothing exists. Me must just go and do what I do normally. No, sir. Me not do like that. Me doing like that. Me prefer catch it at Guala. I, 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 I prefer catch it. Try not to catch it. Than be an idiot and catch it and realize that I could have to stop it. It's just so. Anyway, this is the cutting edge. Uh, Mark Mark coming through, talking about the American dream. Everybody want to go to America. I don't know about now still, but look like everybody want to leave America. <laughs> Tables go around the other way, 220 odd thousand people pass over because of this COVID thing. And them gone like 8 million people were affected. You know, this time yeah, when the cold time had come on, you know, and the flu. Because, you know, there are two things they have to contend with now, you know. The COVID and the, 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 the regular flu. May I tell you, vaccination like words. <laughs> Pure juke up, juke up, juke up, juke up, juke up. Yes. Make your works be seen, man. Not just talk it, but make them see it. Yes. Because you know, say, it's a light, you know. It's a light. It's like a candle pan on a mountainside, you know. Dark, but the light guide you. So we have to know that, say, we are light. Lights of the world, man. Men and people sometimes come say, Muta, tell, tell me something. Like, why you not eat meat? Or why you eat? <laughs> the problem with them little argument there, you know, is like, if you a vegetarian, not have no choice. And them have more choice. But people who need meat, not have no, no whole heap of choice to eat. Them just eat meat. <laughs> yes. May I tell you? Maccabee tree lick we give him, you know. 
out of Birmingham, the bridge in there, some serious poetry. I tell you, man, I'm flexing the poetry straight. This is the cutting edge and IRFM. You know, when the program starts with that, have oh, Rasta and oh, Rasta seem to like. I follow like Christian so much you now that them start to, all of them song them start to sound like Christian. And you know, I would have rest out there with tell you, say them are Christian, them are the first Christian, African was the first Christian and all them something there. We know how the origination of Jesus Christ come about. We know, say, really and truly, I will be part of makeup. I will be part of makeup. We know say the book them where them give you Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. We know say no way that the Bible tell you say them man that it exists. It's just the book of according to Matthew, according to Mark. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It's not Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Because I grew up for you, so them was the apostles of Christ where you used to walk up and the disciples. Not no gosso. Not no gosso. Then the next one when named Paul. It's really a problem. Because a problem look like a middle. Paul look like a middle and he had more for food and him say a light in a, a, a bright light strike him and the way to Damascus. And him get this revelation of Jesus Christ. Where theme things them right long before Matthew Luke and John. And him never meet Jesus Christ yet. Nobody don't know where Jesus Christ buried. Them same gone back. Him by him race on the dead and gone. Which part him gone? People feel so up in the sky. This man still up in the sky for two thousand years. Where him get clothes from? For changing clothes. And what and all them something. There. It's a joke business. Joke, serious joke. So we come now and we are saying, look here. We all deal with our experience, how we have living, and create something for ourselves. So a man come and I say, a fool is just your job, man. You don't believe in a God. People ask them questions, you don't believe in a God. And when you ever ask him, say, when you say God, what do you mean? And so you mean what you mean when you say God? He say, God, the man who created you and me. And me I say, but God no create me. Right away, it's miserable. Get miserable now when you tell him, say, God, no created. Remember, Bridget, big singer, too. Big, big singer. The first time, me and him are going to have some reasoning. It's like, it turned out, so I'm sure they just walk away. Because after me, I tell him, I tell him about God, 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 God. And me, I say, boy, well, me don't know. Him say, who make the trees? Me say, boy, me don't know. You know. The man bring me outside of the house and look up at the sky and say, who made this time? I said, I don't know. The man begs with me for about how much I, I chew. I mean, I don't know. I chew, but I don't really old grudge at all. Anyway, I mean, still talk to him, but the man go like say, I'm the wickedest person I've ever met. How me for say, I don't know who made this sky star? How me for know, say, how, how me go for go talk about me don't know who made the tree? I mean, I said, but I really don't know. I don't know who made the tree. I don't play the service. I don't say no. Me know, say, a God made the tree. I don't know. Because you have so much God. Even the God in the Bible has said, Thou shalt have no other God but me. That means some other God did exist, but him no one. Uh, you have no other God but him. So it kind of gets away that we as Rasta now come create something for ourselves and then I lean back on the things that they tell me. The Lord of old time religious religion. Old time religion can't help you, you know. Because old time religion can't come here so in a bandage and slavery and take over brains and all them something there. We need to come out of that. We need to go to the root of people with the knowledge of them history. It's like a tree without root. It's just simple. So we have to find the root, you know. And only by the thing that I tell you stem from something else. Long before, long, long before. But people now are examining just like how we played the tape a while ago about, about, about the, 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 the flu. So if you tell them, say, without playing the tape, and you go to a man on the road and say, 
You know, say people are wearing masks from you know, the 19, 18, 100 years ago because you have a flu like this. You come around. You know? People say, Muta, where you get them things? Well, Muta, you can come up with some things, see? Which flu? No flu never they about like this. And then me and him go to an argument, you know, and then we have to go walk you know. And then we say, see them boy, the Muta, or if it's a little other one, them now, I call me boy, I'm going to say, uh, where the man they come from, come with them argument there. But you want to know, history is not imagination, you know. History is something that happened, physically happened. History physically happened, it's not belief. Your, your belief that this happened in the past is where you believe it. Now, I'm not familiar with the reality of the situation. You know, man believes eh, a man did dead and come up out of grave and come up back. I wish I had some wish part him them say, him gone up to the sky to come again. In this 21st century, who must believe them something there? You know, long him supposed to have come and him not come. Look how much things black people have got through. The pressure where black people have got through. And him not say black people have come through all of them something there for come. Stand up in night and say, no, this can't continue for another like, how much, 300, 400 years. Then, oh, some people are get off with it. Some people, you know. Saying Jesus and them control the world. And you are saying Jesus and you is the one who them are control. It's a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. So we couldn't look on this thing and all like say everything for them is for me. So just like how them use it, me go use it too. No, sir. We create my own thing. We create my own thing. Nobody can't tell you say you're wrong. Because him don't know where he must say more than him believe where he must say. He believes that, you know, like your grandmother so long and I believe this thing. And your great-grandmother, and she dead and no Jesus can't come yet. And your grandmother dead and except for she and grandmother. Who are ill up she and grandmother who are 102 year old? Yes, she and... Yeah, man. Who are ill up she and grandmother who are 102 year old? She born when the plague, when the plague, the virus. The Spanish flu start. That's a wonderful thing. One hundred and two year old. Me I go so far, still, you know. <laughs> me I go so far, man. No, man. Me I go so far. I really and truly. Me I want to reach out. Well, maybe I should help it to you, know. Maybe she, but she not go live long, you know, because them say, entire people, cool. Your you DNA, yeah, 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 yeah you kind of have that long liberty. In your DNA, so yes, sir. Happy birthday, mama. Happy birthday, anyway. You're there. I hope she go look for her, you know. She ain't. I hope you go look for your mother, your grandmother, you know. She ain't. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We're gonna go do that. She ain't not answer me, you know. Well, oh, you're yeah, gonna well, like answer me, Bridget. If you go look for your grandmother, you know, Bridget. Yes, man. How are you, sir, Mota? Yeah, man. <laughs> anyway, she had an answer, man. Then all you have to she had an answer. I have an answer, yeah, man. But I have to tell you, where are you going? Oh, I did the delay. Yeah, I true, I true, I true. I forgot about the delay, you know. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I got delayed long, man. No, man, 102 is something else, man. 102. Enough time that 100 years ago, when plane never did a fly. Yeah, man, <laughs> up in a Mount Moriah you said that. You when plane never did a fly. 100 years from now, you're going to hear people say, hmm. Where did she come from? Yeah, man, Mount Moriah, St. Oh, Borough Bridge area. Yeah, man. Anyway. Yeah. But, uh, I want to tell you who come from up at them here at the top. Hey. She go to know my wife, mother. She go to know my wife, mother, believe you me. Anyway, we'll take the other man come forward. This is the continent and I refer I know that what I will be for one might say. My brother, they're crazy, you know. Yeah, man. I don't mind the crazy talk still. Uh, the crazy 
branding. So we did that talk about Rastafari and how the thing, all the power ones, especially the singer them, they are listening to them tune, it's so like it's a, it's a Sunday day, Sunday day them tune every play. Cause, I mean, no, no, man, nobody now say I listen to you again. <laughs> Uh, like I little I say a pure jaw. Everybody has a jaw now because him no want to say I little I say. I hear me I say it, you know, you can't make I little I say greater or lesser than who him is. Ja in the Bible, Psalm 68, it started not right up and the wind as Ja. Ja is a bastardization of Ya Y A H because them do have no J in the Hebrew language. So J is J A H is English, them say Ja instead of Ya. So when a man has said Ja, him don't necessarily have to talk about Ailey Selassie. When you say Ailey Selassie, yeah, it's Ailey Selassie at talk about. So we don't need to add no name for him, Ja Rastafari. We don't need to add nothing. You know, see, just take it as it is Rastafari. Simple Rastafari. I did it last the first. I just saw it go. You understand? We're not stop say that. Because I saw it go. You got to add things for me. Me see this and that and that and hey, me have a book right now. Me have a book. It's a book, you know, with all the I did it last is what them call it. Um titles. Can you imagine a man have a book? I might tell you about I did last titles in the book. And that book is about I did last titles. With all the titles they mean I from everywhere. So you can you imagine now you call out film name? Ladies and gentlemen, we now present to you Emperor Iris Lassia, first order of the this and that, first right thing to that that right. I'll, I'll tomorrow you know, don't call him title them. You understand? So I said, oh, I just rest a far right, Iris Lassie. You don't have to say nothing else. You don't have to say God, you don't have to say Christ in his kingly character, you don't have to say Christ return, you don't have to say all them talk there. Because them think there's confusion. Confusion to the mind who out there now where I tell you, say, but I just like say I know God. Oh you, oh, you get that? You know, see? Because he might imagine God in a female head, I can't do what them tell him God created the heaven and the earth. And like when me look at the bridge, I say, me don't know who created it. Him vex with me. Because I don't know, but him know. Him knows your God. You understand? What is God? You can't say, what is God to certain people? You have to say, who is God? And that is the problem with it. You can't look at a man and say, why? It, it, it created the heaven and the earth. And you must say, you can't call God it. Then all you know is it right for call God God. <laughs> Confusion. Confusion. It's really a confusion. It's a confusion, right? God, what is God? What is God? That is the question, you know. What is God, not who is God? Because you uh, make God into a person, you know, so you, you try to make him become like human, anthropomorphic. Them call it anthropomorphism, where you give God all the attributes of a human being. So if it's who is God, and you say, E, is a human being you talk about. But most people, when them say God is not a human being you talk about, is a it. But it sounds disgusting if you say it when you deal with God. But it's better you say it than say E. It's better you say it than say she. Some people are married off God. <laughs> So if you're married, I have God, you know, say, if you have a God, you must have a goddess. So if God is another level, you know, all right, I just like to see he's a man, and him have a wife who's a woman. It's simple. Simple things, you know, simple things. You know, I forget in a whole heap of this and this and that. You know, it's just that you have to validate your perception and concept based up off of European logic. It's just so. Yes. The man said, let's all spread the love 
Yeah, man, we have to spread the love. So, you know, say, we want some more of that amongst each other. We want some more of that amongst each other. You know, we have people that left church and find God, you know. Yeah, because, you know, say, we them look for nothing at the church. Four walls and sometimes two, three windows. Now nah, go work out. So I say you have to go inside of yourself. You have to burn again. <laughs> yeah, man, you have to burn again, man. You have to throw away that and come again. And if you don't come again, you know, say, you're just stuck. And the thing is, a, it's a process of evolution, too. Yeah, you have to evolve. It's not a bad thing, you know. Some some people afraid of evolution, you know. We're not about evolution as in Charles Darwin um, theory. We're talking about evolution as Juliet's to move it from one stage to the next level. Like climbing a ladder. You're moving from one stage to the next level. So really and truly, that is what we're supposed to do. We can't stop. Some people stop. For years, I'm stuck and can't move and can't get no further. Whether in life or in mind and thought, them can't move further. So we are promote evolution, the consciousness, the process by which you move from one stage to the next level. So you start to see things different from the level where you was. It's not a turn back, you know. Turn back is when you go down the ladder. You know, sir? Going up is when you, you climb the ladder. And we are talking about climbing the ladder. Climbing the ladder of life. Climbing the ladder of existence and of truth. And truth is relative. Truth is relative. Yes, because something might be true here. And you know, say it's not true over there. So we're not an act truth. We're not an act truth. Long man. We we'll look out at the people, them is as blind as Batman. I will carry you that again. But see, when one eyed man will lead you and you're blind, it's a terrible thing. In the kingdom of the blind, the one eyed man is king. And it really gets away, it really gets away. Because when we listen and hear people are say that them is, them is covered in the blood of the lamb so them can't catch COVID. Yet still, there's so much churches that the congregation have gotten COVID over the past four or five months. And people still are insist to say that. Say, you, you who are doing this and I do that, it's because you don't have no faith. <laughs> because you don't have no faith. Believe you be. I want to ask a man, you know. He's a man of the Bible named Lazarus. And them say, Lazarus the dead. And him in the, the tomb, a, a stink. And Jesus go there and say, Lazarus come forth. And Lazarus get up out of the tomb and become a living. That's what I'm going to talk about say. Jesus Christ raised from the dead. All right? So Lazarus raised from the dead. No, the question is... Where is Lazarus today? Did he die again? I don't know I'm going to two times, but I want to know where is Lazarus. Did Lazarus dead again? Because I was still awake for Jesus to come. But Lazarus did raise from the dead and come back. Him dead and raised from the dead and come back with the aid. Of an ex man, but we want to know where I'm there. Where I'm there. What is the purpose of raising a dead man from the grave and then know him dead again? What was it, the purpose of it? For sure, I've said, yeah, you have a hope there, you know, you can't do voodoo and all them, something like that. Magic and all these things. It's just a... Tell me which part I'm there. Tell me where I'm there. Somebody recommends, say, uh, 
those of you in church you should like get interested in reading some books that do have nothing to do with what you believe yeah read some books where do have nothing as a matter of fact read some where country dick where you believe too yeah read some book where country dick where you believe but read some book go up online and look for things where you know say no, you don't agree with but read it still and look upon it because it's very important that you do these things yeah the first sign of investigation is doubt you know doubt make you want to find out things and search things so we also tell the people them that as part of the process as part of the whole thing because trust me things not the same Remember when your granny used to sit on the veranda? My people, we have made it to the end. Give thanks to the ones and ones who made it this far. Quite a journey, my people. Quite a journey. But so many content in this one that I'm telling you, it will make a serious impact and a difference in the ones and ones who watch with understanding and not ignorancy. Let me know on the thing down in the comment section about it. And before we go, you know it's a black power movement. Drop a like and subscribe. Share to a friend or a family so they can be a part of the movement. I right, catch you in the next one, Irie.